well, feels like my whole life. It's been almost like 15 years now. Um, two and a half years ago is when I decided to build a business of my own. Um, I had been approached about it a, a lot of times and said no and thought that uh, it's not something that I needed. And, um, you know, little did I know I was six and a half months pregnant and it was something that I needed. I needed a little bit more financial freedom. I needed some flexibility in my schedule. Um, you know, being in the gym, coaching nonstop was not going to be able to work for me in my schedule um, with, with wanting to raise my babies and be present for them. So two and a half years later, here I am and I'm doing awesome events like this. And yes, Nicole, I see you there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to a day to Kumba and she's going to uh, share a little bit more about her journey. Yes. Thanks so much for being here, guys. So as Brittany said, my name is Desi Kumapaleti. I am an also in Southern California. I'm a Texas native though. So I know I have some folks on here from Texas. So hello, hello. I actually, um, my story is a little bit different. So I had a career ending knee surgery that basically took me out of being able to be competitive for the rest of my life. And I had plans to playing volleyball in college and then after that play continuously. And um, my senior year, I blew my knee out and he basically, doctor basically told me like, you're gonna be done. You can't do much more besides just um, regular exercise, like very, very minimal. And um, it was devastating. So my life changed in that, at that moment and I felt like a prisoner. I felt like I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't compete the way I wanted to compete. I really enjoy working out and I really enjoy pushing myself. And I didn't have the ability to do that. And um, so from college, to, you know, about a year and a half ago, I was always in pain. I was struggling to go up and down the stairs. I would coach for hours and be swollen. Um, I can't remember a time where I wasn't in pain. And so when my friend Brittany um, said, hey, we have some products that I'm, I'm starting to do this business and the products are really incredible. Research is great. I was like, well, I had tried everything else. Let me just try this. I started off with our first, it was just like plant powders, which is a fruit and veggie. And um, that was 2019. And then last year, January, I added in the berries and omegas. And that's when I realized my, my life really just changed at that point. I went from being in pain consistently to noticing that I wasn't having to ice my knee every single day. I wasn't having to um, walk down the stairs, basically limp. And I, I realized I could, do, I could push myself very hard. I can go hard in my workouts. And it was incredible. So at that point I knew I had to share. Like I had to share this. And then I realized the importance of it because it just had so much more, I had a lot of vision to really have financial freedom and this business could do that for me. So I wanted to share it and also monetize it as well. So that's my story. So I want to go ahead and introduce our awesome panelists. So right now we have, we have four beautiful women who are gonna talk today and talk about their stories and their journeys to building freedom for themselves and their families. So we first have Nicole Taylor. She's a wife and mother of four. God for any woman. She lives in Southern California. She's a beauty and uh, beauty counter consultant. She leads the movement to a future where all beauty is clean beauty. And so she's been in business with her company for three years and she loves educating people on clean beauty products. We also have Angela Cormier, health and fitness services is her business. Started her online business in summer 2020. So just recently actually, but she's been a coach and trainer for over a decade. Um, helping thousands of youth and hundreds of women and men all over the country. She's a wife and mother of two beautiful girls and also lives in North Northern California. Then we have Angeli Amor. She's a military wife, mother of two beautiful girls, young living ambassador. She's been in business for three years and she loves educating people on choosing healthier, non-toxic options for their families and their, and their lives. And she also lives in, she lives in Oklahoma. So those are our our, our first three. And then my sister, Rike Faleti, she's the owner of Vi Nike, started in 2016. She lives in Houston, Houston native. She's a gardener, fashionista, designer, and manicurist. She's in love with all things beauty and makeup related. She believes in promoting the beauty and community of black women. So those are our four panelists. Um, so we're gonna, get, we're gonna get started right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask, I'm gonna ask you guys three questions and the order will be, Nicole will be first. So first thing, Nicole, share with us your business story and share with us the journey and how you became a beauty consultant. 
Yes, thank you so much, TK. I am so happy to be here. Um, I started my business about two years ago. Um, and I started it because of my best friend's mom, Loretta Washington. Loretta Washington was a, a person who took me into her home like her own baby, clothed me, washed me, fed me. And when I was about 12 years old, Loretta was diagnosed with breast cancer. And when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, the first thing the doctors did was switch, swap out all of her products. They said that she had to use clean beauty. So she couldn't use toxic soap anymore. She couldn't use toxic deodorant. She couldn't use toxic makeup or lotions. She ended up passing away a couple years later, but I thought to myself, why wasn't she using clean beauty her whole life? Why aren't all women using clean beauty? Um, and so I found out about Beauty Counter and I said, I wanna jump in. I wanna help other women make that transfer over to using clean, safe skincare and makeup. That's awesome. Angela, what about you? What's your, your business story? I feel like it's a pretty long journey into how it came about, but ultimately it's, um, it has to do with the health and wellness industry and um, things I saw in the fitness world that I didn't really love. And so I worked in physical therapy for a while. I was a trainer for a while. I was a, an athlete. And through all of this, my personal self-image was pretty bad. It was no good. <laughs> and so in working with girls and in working with women and in working with youth and kind of having my own journey and becoming a mom, having girls of my own, I decided to create my own business and do fitness differently. So from injuries as an athlete, from negative self-thinking, negative self-talk, um, to becoming a mom and wanting to be a role model and help other women feel the same way and not only improving their physical health, but also their mental health and their self-perception in the journey of becoming fit and well um, is ultimately why, yeah, I created my own fitness business. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Anjali, what's your business story and journey to, to your company? Thank you so much for this space and opportunity to share our story. My story began in Germany when we had a, a scare with my husband who um, was diagnosed with a benign tumor. But before that, you know, we weren't sure it was going to be benign. So our journey started with the holistic living and, you know, wanting to make a change because now we have two daughters. So being a military family, we move around a lot, we meet a lot of different people, so making sure that we're moving toxins from our life is very important because we're being the example for others and for our daughters. So primarily it's definitely just making our own, you know, eliminating the toxins from our lives and sharing the examples with others. And it started with seasonal allergies and then it went into making my own bug spray or making my own, you know, cleaner. And so that was very important for me because I have to always say, if you're going to be about it, live about it, you know, and so that's very important for me. And now I have my daughters using essential oils and it's just, it's just so fun to see you pass down so many different things to them. And, you know, medicine, of course, modern medicine is there, but for me, it was always a ditch and switch into living a holistic life. So that was definitely, and now my husband's going plant-based. I'm not there yet, but you know, I'm yeah. gradually getting there. So it's definitely, it's definitely challenging, but it's, it's doable. That's awesome. Thank you. Rika, what's your, what's your journey to your business? Hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, TK and Brittany and Ade Tukumba. Um, it was really by accident. I was kind of bullied into it. So many, many moons ago, this is over 10 years ago, I was a baby doll bald. I had a fade. And so I was always about being bold and bright since I didn't have hair, you know, we usually hide behind our hair. I didn't have hair. So I said, I need other things that to celebrate who I am and my beauty. So I used to rock big earrings. I used to get the little cheek necklaces and it got, you know, the costume jewelry back in the day. And I was like, this stuff is just not as, uh, as I need it to be. It's not given what it needs to give. So I started tearing things down and just creating my own huge pieces. And it got noticed, you know, you sisters were like, hey, let me, can you, I want to rock something, make me something. Okay, let me go ahead and make it for you. And it got to a point where friends were asking as well. 
And it really, honestly, Shoah was kind of like, you know, she has that network. And so she was like, well, my friends saw this and they want to order this. You really need to go ahead and go into business. And I was like, eh, psh, I'm not trying to do that right now. That's going to be a lot of drama. Well, soon after, maybe a couple months after I got laid off and I was with that company for about five years, I had a little severance package. I had um, uh, unemployment and I was like, you know what, this is an opportunity to go ahead and see what this takes me without trying to go back into the workforce. And so I created Jules by Nika and I actually did that for about three years, even after my unemployment ran out, it was able to sustain me and carry me over. And it just kind of morphed into by Nika with the head wraps and the turbans, um, just because I used to be, uh, you know, a naturalista that used to wrap my hair all the time. And people were like, well, I can't do that. I don't know how to wrap. Like, go to YouTube. YouTube has a plethora of knowledge. You can do it yourself. Just watch it and just follow along. Like, no, it's too complicated. It comes easy for you. I was like, okay, bet. I got you. And so I started creating turbans that were pre-tied. So it made it easy for people to just slip on, go, you're immediately beautified. And from that, it's just evolved. So that was in 2016. So it came out of bullying. I recognized that there was a need in the market because this is really before a lot of people were doing the turbans and the wraps. And so I was able to jump in, create my network, and here we are. That is so, so beautiful. I love it. Um, and make sure you guys are following these ladies. Yes. We'll talk about that afterwards because you're like their stories are just so inspiring, but you can learn even more um, if you're following them on social media. Um, so the next question that we have is when you're building a business, there are struggles and obstacles that we face, right? And so my question. Sorry, thanks for holding, okay. Oh. Sorry, you already brushed your teeth, right? We got to mute. Got you. Do I have? Okay, there we go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So struggles and obstacles, these do come up, right? And so that is our next question. What struggles and obstacles have you faced and, and, and maybe a better question is, what is the biggest one that you face? What's the scariest one that you face? Because there are tons, I think, every single day, right? Um, so what's the biggest one and how did you overcome it? So Nicole, I'll let you go ahead and take that first. The biggest obstacle was myself. I had limiting beliefs. I said, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I thought starting my own business would be like an arm and a leg. Um, I thought I would drop the ball. I have four babies, two boys and two girls, all under the ages of nine. And I thought I would drop the ball at home. I thought if I started my own business, maybe my one-year-old would fall down the stairs or something while I'm trying to email. And so I, I counted myself out from the jump. I thought it was a pyramid scheme. Um, I thought this type of business, um, direct sales was only for white people. Um, but this business has been such a blessing to my life. My children help me with my business. They help with mail and put things off and they love it. One of my daughters were part, I homeschooled as well, but we're part of a hybrid homeschool. She brought my cards to school without me knowing and passed them out to her friends. And then today, my child, my three-year-old, he was having a tantrum, like an hour long tantrum. And I thought to myself, I am so happy that I am at home working from home and I get to experience this tantrum. I don't have to drop my kids off at a babysitter and go to work. Um, I have four kids, so we all know if I did go out to work, all my money would go to childcare. And so this gives me the opportunity to bring in a significant income, make a social impact and be there for my babies. Oh, I love that. I completely resonate with that. Um, Angela, let's, let's hear your biggest obstacle. Yeah, mine is so similar as a mother and starting my business in the summer of 2020. I started it in the middle of the pandemic. I have a two and a four year old and they were home with me the whole time I started this. And so I would say time management was extremely difficult. I would get up at 5 a.m. and go straight to work until my husband went to work. And then I would work during nap time. I would stay up until midnight. And it wasn't necessarily difficult because I loved it, which is, I think the most important thing is if you love it, then you want to stay up until midnight doing it. But time management was uh, definitely a challenge and it still is. You know, we were home, my kids were home with me and they still are home with me all day, you know, but, but similar um, to what Nicole said is they're helping me work and they're watching me do it 
which is really inspiring. They're, you know, my four-year-old hops in my workout videos or, you know, does all my workouts with me. And she, and she, she talks to the camera and she says, we're doing this because it makes us stronger. We're doing this because it makes us feel good. And so that has been the biggest struggle, but also the biggest blessing as well, being home and being able to role model, you know, those things. So, but ooh, time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And that is beautiful. I've seen that on your social media. It's so beautiful to see the babies getting involved. Um, Anjali, go for it. So I uh, definitely agree with Nicole and Angela. The another one is hearing no and getting discouraged right away when that one no could lead to 10 yeses if the consistency remains. So hearing a no is very discouraging or you know an unfollow or any, anything of that sort that's negative for you. But not understanding that that person may not be in the right mind frame or the financial state to do that business or you know have that conversation. So hearing no and not getting discouraged right away from me because um, you know, I can say sometimes I'm a people pleaser and I'm like, no, I don't want to hear no. I want to hear yes all the time. And that's not realistic because those no's actually get me, you know, actually more motivated to create better content to, you know, actually YouTube, like, um, you know, your sister was saying, and really do my research about how the algorithm of Instagram works, which is very, very complicated. It changes every week. So for me, it's like trying to keep up with technology because it's changing, but also making sure that I'm making those proper steps for myself and learning why are people saying no? Am I not creating valuable content? Am I not putting out the information in the right manner? Am I being not like, am I not giving the value at the right time? Because the time of posting is also very, very crucial. If you post in the morning, people can miss your post. If you post between two and three, you're like, this is a whole nother job, but it's, it's a job that you want to do because you have passion for spreading that knowledge. So for me, that's, that's my biggest challenge. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Learning from the nose is huge. Um, Rike. Uh, the ladies have all said some very powerful and serious things. Fear, time management, and hearing no. Uh, that's a check, check, check for everything I've experienced as well. I will definitely add keeping your books together financially. The IRS does not play, okay? So making sure that you have all of your ducks aligned, getting your DBA, starting off initially with that, verifying, figuring out if you're going to be an LLC or how your business is going to be run and making sure you have concrete financial evidence because sometimes they do come calling. Um, definitely just making sure you have whatever you use, if it's Excel or any other software that's gonna allow you to see what you're spending because it's gonna be important to verify, yeah, you're seeing that profit, but am I really profitable or am I just breaking even? Am I just replenishing the money that I put out? Especially if you're using your own finances. One of my challenges were I was using my own money. I didn't have any investors. Um, I didn't think that I, you know, I didn't have a business plan when I first started. So making sure you get your business plan together so that you can venture out to bigger things and have opportunities to get loans, to actually have backers, because they're not just going to hand out money to you if you don't know what your business is about and you cannot clearly tell people what your business is about. Okay. So um, that's probably one of my biggest, biggest challenges is initially not having everything together and just saying, oh, hello, bye for me. I have a business. Well, now the business has wrapped up and I have a network and I need to make sure I can get these orders out. Can I afford to hire some help? Will I be able to pay somebody and take that out of my own profit? Are you paying yourself back? A lot of times, yeah, we're making that profit, but when we break it down hourly, are you making that money? So are you actually paying yourself back? Because typically, let's be real, usually you are every component of the business. You're the CEO, you're the shipper, you're the marketer. You're doing all of those things, your customer service. You're handling all of that. And if you don't have help, then are you paying yourself back for all of those hours? Because you're not always just working that nine to five. You're working all day. Like she said, she's getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning. You're dealing with your kids. You're dealing with your husband. Some people are still in school. People like me, I still have that nine to five. So are we really being profitable? And how are we showing that we're making that money? And how are we ensuring that we can continue to sustain the business if we're keeping our books together and you're seeing what is successful and you focus on what's successful 
and then you can just continue to go up back and forth. I'm sorry, you can continue to go in that same route to ensure that you continue to continue to see that success. Um, like she was saying, keeping up with social media, am I going to pay for marketing or am I going to do it myself? And do I have the time and capacity to even see what the new trends are so that I can be marketable, so I can be on trend? So definitely making sure that you're seeing where your money is going, how you're spending it, and making sure that you stay profitable for sure. That's awesome. Thanks, ladies, for that. I mean, we've gone through your journey, how you got to your business. We've gone through some struggles and obstacles you had to overcome. And probably the most important question, I think, is what do you see for yourself in the future? What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your future to look like? What are you looking for? Um, what are you looking to get out of this besides just monetary? And if it is monetary, what are you looking for? But I think it's really important for us to see our future and, and really think ahead. So let's go with Nicole. What do you envision for yourself and for your business? Well, right now I am not, me and my husband, we're not living paycheck to paycheck. And I would love to help other women and men do the same, to create income opportunities for other women and men, I'm talking hundreds of them. So that's where I see myself in the future. Um, I still, I see myself doing this as a coach for 10, 15, 20 years. And I plan on retiring my husband and myself pretty early. Um, I think that there's a lot of women on here who may be looking to get a fresh start or they might be tired of working where they're at right now. I have a girl on my team that used to work for Nordstrom full time and she, um, she, her dream was to be at home with her baby. She worked at Nordstrom for 13 years and now she, she only does beauty counter full time, which is amazing. And she's able to be at home with her babies full time. And that was her dream. And so she's making that happen. And I am just so thankful to be a part of that. And I want to do that for other women. If you don't want to work at work in the fields anymore, you don't want to ride that bus, you know, being, being next to drunk people in the morning or being in three, four hours in traffic every morning, um, wasting time. I want to provide women with that space to be at home um, with their babies. I love that. I love that. Allowing women to have the freedom to do what they want to do, which is the most important thing, having freedom. What about you, Angela? What do you see for yourself in the future in your business? I mean, very similar, just growth in every aspect. Growth, of course, financially, but growth in the sense of helping more women. And for me, that means helping them get physically healthy, helping them get mentally healthy and just having complete self-confidence in who they are and what they want to achieve. And if that means leaving that full-time job, that's, you know, safe and pursuing the dreams and that's what it means. And it starts with being healthy, being happy and being confident. And that's what my program does. It focuses on all of those. And so right now we're in many states across the country, when Colorado, Oregon, Texas, um, Illinois, the goal eventually is to be worldwide because the services are online completely. So you can reach endless amounts of people. And so really just spreading the love and spreading the health and, and growing in every way. So. Oh, I love that. I love that. If you're not dreaming that big and they don't, if your dreams don't scare you, it's not big enough, right? So I love that you want to get to a place where you're helping women and men all over the world, worldwide mental and physical health. That's beautiful. Angelique, what about you? What do you envision for yourself? Uh, I envision all of that and receive what Nicole and Angela said for sure. And making holistic living simple and easy, you know, not complicating things because there is so much knowledge out there and so much to take in all at once. And it can be challenging and overwhelming. So making it simple, being a mentor, um, I'm super proud of not just the business, but uh, a Bible study that we started a year ago and it has done dynamics and it's not a business, but it's something that it's like our baby. And I'm super proud of the safe space that we've created for women to come and share their testimonies and be a blessing to other people. And that also has impacted with the business because I've met women on Instagram that I have not met that have been blessed by the Bible study. And like I said, I've never met them and their stories have touched my life and even made me a better Christian. So using the business as a pathway to even touch people in a, in the Christian form. I love that. And it's, it's just been such a blessing for me. So 
I love that. I love that. And I love how you tied that into you being a believer. That's beautiful. Rika, what do you see for yourself in your business in the future? Definitely everything that the lady said, uh, full-time opportunity, I think is probably number one, just being able to allow to have that outlet on a regular basis. But I think honestly and truly for me, because um, I've been very blessed to have this as a side income that's allowed me to stack my money and I still enjoy what I do on a, a day-to-day basis. I want to continue to be a creative outlet and inspiration to other women um, just in what I design. And to just like um, Angela was saying, just allow people to feel beautiful and confident in what they're rocking. When it's a buy a piece, you know this buy a And I want to continue to stay unique to my own designs and hopefully have the creativity to, to continue and have the passion to continue. Because sometimes we get in those stagnant moments like she was just saying with social media, how do I be creative? How am I going to be creative? How am I going to be um, effective? And people are going to want to actually purchase my merchandise. I think I just want to continue to have that passion and hopefully be creative so I can be thinking in the future about what women will need so I don't become stale. So that's my goal, just to continue to grow in that area and stay creatively inspirational. Beautiful. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, guys, you know, we're, we're right at the end of our call. I wanna make sure that I thank our panelists. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Rika. Thank you, Brittany, for hosting this with me. It's just, this is inspirational. And we wanted to, to put something together each month that was gonna really bring connectivity, bring authenticity, bring um, just truthfulness and bring inspiration and motivation. And I hope that you guys got value out of this call. Hopefully you feel inspired by the women that you heard today. I wanna thank you guys. I know I have people that are in Texas, Brittany has people that are on the East Coast. It's late where you are, it's 9.30, it's 10.30 where you are and you took your time to spend with us and listen to these ladies share and pour their hearts out to you. Um, I think it's really important for us, especially as women, to get to a place where we are independent, independent financially. And we have the choice to do what we choose to do versus what we need to do. And it would be a beautiful thing if we all get to a place where we have freedom financially and flexibility financially. And we have the choice to do whatever we choose. And our dream should be huge and massive and scare us. And we should be able to go for it and have a community of women who, are, who have our backs and encourage us. So I'm just grateful for this call. Thank you so much. You guys exceeded what we expected. We had 52, I, I think on the call at, at one time and that's, this is our first event. We're just so grateful that you're here. We're so grateful that you guys spent your time with us. But I do hope that you got some inspiration, some value from this. And I do encourage you, you know, maybe it's not necessarily for you if, it, if you are, you know, maybe you don't want to, you don't want to sell plant powders and tower gardens. Maybe you don't want to sell beauty products and skincare, or you don't want to necessarily, you know, be a health professional, but there is something that God gave you that you have inside that you can share and you can monetize, right? And I hope that you do decide to, if you are, if you're tugged at the heart by anybody that's on this panel, please get in their DMs and have a conversation about what they do in more depth. Cause this was a very small little snippet of what they do. Get and talk to them and get in more depth about what they do and how, maybe, maybe it is a good fit for you. But I know one thing for sure, Brittany and I don't know one thing for sure. It is absolutely a good fit to be financially free and flexible. So whatever you can do to get there is the goal. Um, I'm going to stop the recording right now. We're going to have a little, little mini after party. If you have any questions or anything that you